Hey guys, Axe Khan from Reaching Excellence. We're back in London, back in the office. And in this video, I want to share with you how you can pitch to investors to get investors to invest in your deal. Now, what I want to do in this video is I want to break down the 15 things that you must communicate effectively to an investor to get them to buy into your deal, okay? And this is something that's come up recently from people inside my academy, students who are actually going out and buying businesses. And also, I had a really interesting meeting today with a business broker. And I'll tell you that story as we go along, okay? So for those of you who don't know me, I've been an entrepreneur for 30 years. I started from nothing, uh, kicked out of school, no qualifications. I worked my way up. I did uh, 20 years in real estate, did 208 property transactions, uh, built various other businesses, estate agencies, letting agencies. And more recently, I've been involved in M&A and I'm building a portfolio of businesses that are property related with my business partner, Elliot. And I'm also the founder and co-author, sorry, founder and author of the Reaching Excellence Academy and the co-author of Play the Game book. Okay, so guys, let's dive straight into this. Why am I shooting this video? Okay, well, look, one of the things that was a struggle for me when I started out was actually getting people to invest with me. And I had this belief that you needed to have money first to be able to do deals, okay? And then once I, it took me 10 years to do my first property deal, that's because I had that belief. That belief was a limiting belief that was holding me back. Once I actually did my first deal and I got into the game, I then realized you don't need money. You need, need to have skill and knowledge. Once you've got the skill and knowledge, the money will come. So what I want to do with you guys here is give you a breakdown of the 15 things that you need to know that will help you to get there further forwards. Because if I knew this stuff earlier, I would have had another decade of buying properties, buying businesses, and I'd have been further ahead. So I want to share that with you so you guys can get ahead. You can go out there, build wealth, and live the dream life. And that's part of my mission. That's why I put these videos out there. That's why I share the content I, I want to share with people because it's my personal mission to help every man, everyone who wants to, to go out there, build wealth, become financially free, and live their dream life. Because at the end of the day, life is precious. It's not a dress rehearsal, so you might as well live, the, live your best life and live, you know, make the most of life, basically. So let's dive into the content, guys, okay? So here's the 15 things that you need to know, okay? When it comes to communicating with an investor, you're probably going to need to put together a pitch deck. So what is a pitch deck? A pitch deck is like a group of slides or some sort of document that will illustrate all the key points that someone needs to know. Now, the thing you don't want to be doing is pitching to people without a pitch deck or any kind of visuals or numbers, okay? I have people do this all the time, say, hey, Axel, I've got this great property deal, I've got this business, and I go, okay, give me the details. They'll tell me on the phone. I'm like, that's no good to me. I don't want to hear it. I need to see something. I need a visual reference, okay? So with a pitch deck, what you're going to need to do is have some form of slide, some sort of PDF, some sort of document that illustrates these 15 points, okay? It's a really, really basic thing that you need to know. You need to be able to do is give them the business name. What is the name of the business? Hopefully, it's a limited company because it's going to be a better com better, better, and more profitable company than if it's a sole trader. And put the company name down on the slide. So let's say you're buying ABC Scaffolding Limited. There's the address. There's the company number on a company's house, okay? The next thing you need to talk about is the industry, okay? What is the industry? What is it, what is it about? And that's going to give someone an understanding because don't assume that just because you know about a particular industry that your investor will. You have to assume that an investor doesn't know anything about your business. They're going to be they're going to be cautious. They're going to be wary. And you've got to also understand that different investors have got different levels of risk. Some are sophisticated. Some are not so sophisticated. Some are going to have different appetites. So you want to cover everything and assume they know nothing, right? The best thing to do is almost imagine you're trying to pitch this to a 12-year-old kid so they have an understanding, okay? So don't make any assumptions. So you want to give them the business name. You want to give them the industry. But also what you want to be doing is finding out and give them information on the market size, okay? That way they have an idea of like how big the market is, how much demand there's going to be for this. Um, is this business going to be sustainable and is it going to be something worth investing in or is it high risk, okay? The other thing you need to also understand that an investor is going to need to know is what is the product or service? Like what is the service that they're offering? And you need to get very specific around this. So for example, sake, if I was to put a pitch deck together around my scaffolding companies or me acquiring another scaffolding company, I would say specifically it provides scaffolding and the scaffolding services, but to who? Is it business to business or is it business to consumer? So, you know, is it going out and you know, putting scaffolding up around sort of three, four bedroom houses where people can pay the front of their houses, or are we doing more commercially minded projects, which is maybe property maintenance, you know, that's where the contracts are, we're doing stuff outside the front of buildings, or are we doing something more construction related where we're building, uh, you know, uh, or you know, doing conversions outside, you know, commercial buildings that be converted into flats, 
or are we doing new bills that are coming out of the ground, okay? You need to make sure they understand what the industry is and who it is that you're serving, okay? And what is the size of that particular market? Because you might specialize in a certain area, they need to have an understanding of that. Again, this is so they can understand the business and understand what the risks are, okay? The other thing you wanna know is like, uh, or you wanna be communicating to people is what is the marketing budget, okay? How much money do they spend on marketing? How much money do they spend on lead generation? How does that work? And it's important to give them an understanding of that so they understand that you are actively doing things to grow the business, yeah? Next thing you want to talk about is the location. Why is that important? Because, you know, if you've got something that's, let's say it's a London-based business versus something that is, I don't know, down in the depths of Kent, you know, by the Kent coast, there's going to be different dynamics of, of how a business is going to work in London versus somewhere that's a bit more rural, okay? The other thing is, you know, an investor might want to go do their own due diligence or their own research on the company. They might want to find out how much competition they've got versus how much of the market share that they've got. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does, okay? Next thing you want to talk about is, you know, is the business online or is it offline, okay? Well, obviously with scaffolding, it's, it's, it's offline. It's like a practical business, although there might be an online presence, everything is done kind of offline, okay? Next thing they want to know is what is the sales and marketing setup, okay? How does it work? You know, is there a person that is a, a business development manager? Is there a sales team in place? What is the sales and process that they, the business has got set up that allows them to keep generating leads and bringing businesses? Is it that, you know, uh, like in scaffolding with our scaffolding company, a lot of our customers have been long term customers. You know, is it you just stick with those customers and you go out and nurture slowly? Or is it something a little bit more aggressive, let's say like a, a double glazing company where you're going to have to go out and constantly getting, you know, leads in and getting those leads converted, okay? Again, they need to know what's it going to take for their for this business to be sustainable and is it worth, you know, investing in. So you need to tell them what the sales and marketing setup is, is okay? Next thing you need to talk about is what's the current revenue? Like what's the current amount of money that's coming into the business, okay? And also like we've got to, got to bear in mind for the last couple of years we've had covid like sales been dipped um typically when it comes to looking at a business tip, people would put like the last three years worth of accounts down my suggestion is you use like the last five years accounts and also go forwards and if accounts aren't done give them management figures as well because this needs to give them a really accurate figure you know over the last couple of years there's a lot of businesses that have been affected by covid some of those businesses kind of dipped some of them recovered and flourished other industries and certain businesses, they haven't. You know, the restaurant and hospitality business, for example, uh, I know of a lot of businesses that were doing, you know, quite quite good sales. They've dipped to like sort of, you know, 50% of what they were doing. And even post-COVID, they haven't recovered properly. So the, you need to have an understanding of what the current revenue is, okay? Next thing you want to be thinking about is what is the current gross and net profit, okay? So what's the profit, you know, the EBITDA, earnings before tax, and what's the net profit, these are accurate figures because an investor is going to need to look at this and go, okay, is there enough meat on the bone for me to get my return on investment? Is there enough in this that if there was some kind of dip in sales, if there was another lockdown or, you know, something happened in the market, that is there enough meat on the bone for me to get my money back out of this, depending on the kind of structure or the kind of investment you want? You know, people can either give you a simple, straightforward loan or they can invest in, as, a, as a shareholder and take a profit share, okay? The other thing that you people are going to need to know inside your pitch deck is what are your plans to expand and grow the business? So one of the things that I do and one of the things I teach my students is when you've taken a business on and before you've even taken and completed on the business, you need to look at that business and go, okay, what can we do to improve the business? What can we do to make it more efficient? What can we do to make it more profitable? And what can we do to scale the business up and grow the profits without using huge amounts of capital? So where's the sweet spot? So it's important that like when you buy a business, you've got a 90 day plan. And what you need to look at is what are your plans to ex expand the business, to grow the business and scale the business? And what's the reality of it? Because it's easy to project things and say, okay, you know, we're gonna we're gonna turn um, this business around. We're gonna increase the sales by X percentage or X amount in money. But you have to break that down and say, well, how's that going to be done? Is it going to be, you know, a, a certain number of clients you need to acquire? Is it a certain number of jobs you need to have? Is it that you need to sell a certain number of products? You need to give your investors a detailed breakdown of how you're going to, you know, you're going to increase sales. So for example, to give you a, a bit of more of an accurate description of this, when I bought one of my scaffolding companies, one of the things that we did was I went and sat with the account and said, okay, this is the total revenue of sales that we've got. How many customers do we actually have? It turned out it was 20 customers. I then worked out 
that through those 20 customers, the average job value was 30 grand. So if I wanted to bring the sales up by you know 120 grand, I just needed four more customers. So that gives us an idea of how many more clients you need to get or how many new customers you need to get to be able to increase the sales. Now, the other thing is it's not just about increasing the sales. You've also got cost of fulfilling those sales. So in that particular scaffolding company, if we wanted to do another 100 grand's worth of sales, we'd have had to employ another gang to go out and erect the scaffolding, which meant there was some costs. So it gives you an idea of what you need to do. So you've got to be realistic and you've got to be very accurate and break things down in a step-by-step logical way when you're coming up for when you're coming up to present your plans for expansion and growth. Sometimes when people don't know much about business, um, it's very easy for us to have these projections of what they'd like, but there is no strategy or a step-by-step plan to implement the stuff. So it's really important that you've got that, okay? The next thing that you need to be doing inside that pitch deck is what actions need to happen for you to be able to grow and scale that business. So just to give you an example for one of the businesses that we acquired, the owner, the previous owner was in his 60s. He wasn't very up to date with tech. You know, it ran very well as it was. It ticked over nicely, but we need to put some things in place to bring it up to 2022, to bring it up to modern day standards and to get the business running like clockwork. So one of the things that we did was we updated the accounting system and how invoices were paid because they used to send an email out. The customer then had to do a bank transfer. This was all a huge pain in the backside and also very inefficient. Okay, It meant that we we were chasing clients up and invoices were paid late. We then put an automated system in place that sends out an email. There's credit card processing. We can take those payments very quickly and easily. We've got uh, uh, customers' card details stored on file. It makes that part of the whole process very simple and easy. The next thing that we did was that we had a CRM system because there wasn't a proper CRM system. We actually got that system developed by the software company that that, um, that, that produced it. We got them to upgrade it and add some additional features like sales pipelines, uh, you know, some accounting stuff and some um, follow up sequences to market, market and remarket towards prospective clients. We've customized that. We've got that system in place. We updated the website and obviously, you know, some branding stuff as well. These are things that we did. And this is the kind of stuff that you need to communicate to a investor so they know, you know, what you're doing, why you're doing it, how you're going to do it and what the plans are to make that happen. OK, the other thing that you need to do is you need to, to communicate to, to your investors in a pitch how much investment you're going to require and why and what it's for. OK, so you might say, you know, I need to uh, raise £100,000 and we need that as payment for, you know, part of the down payment for the deferred consideration. Or we need uh, uh, £200,000 split between two things, £100,000 as a down payment and we need £100,000 to go and buy extra equipment or to develop the business in some way, shape or form. So they need to have a breakdown of how much money you're requiring and what you're requiring that money for. Okay. The next thing you need to do is what's the exit plan. Okay. So, all right, once you've got the business up and running, what are you going to do? Are you going to uh, just keep it? Are you going to sell it on? Are you going to flip it? You know, are you going to refinance it? You know, what's the exit plan? What's the exit plan for you in the business? But also you need to know what's the exit plan or how you're going to exit and pay them their money back. So depending on the agreement you got with them, if it's a simple loan you're taking off of someone, how are you going to pay the loan back to them? What are the loan terms? Or if they're a shareholder and they've got a share of the company, how long do they want that for? Is it something they want on an ongoing basis? They want it for a period of time. And what's the exit plan to pay them back? Okay, that's what you need to do. And then the final thing you need to do is return on investment in the first, second and third year. So these are the 15 things you need to be putting that are comprehensive things that are going to allow an investor to make an educated decision when it comes to investing into your business and funding your deal, okay? This is super, super important. One of the things that will happen is if you don't give people all the information that they need, they can't make a decision. And sometimes a lack of information creates confusion. If you confuse them, you're going to lose them, okay? So um, what I'm going to do, guys, is around this video, I'm going to put a link where you can actually go and download this cheat sheet. So um, there'll be a web form or something. There'll be a link. Go do that. You can download this cheat sheet. What will happen is we'll email that to you so you've got it. You can then go and put that into a pitch deck. And as you put that into the pitch deck, you can put some stuff in there uh, around um, you know all the information that I've just mentioned here. The other thing that you want to be putting in there, which I failed to mention, is actually a little bit about you. So you need to put a little bit of a CV in there about you, your experience, any partners that you might have that are in the business and what their relevant experience is. So 
One thing that's important, guys, is people need to know who's behind the company and who's running it and what their experience is going to be. Okay. So when I've um, uh, approached uh, people uh, who are serious players when it comes to when it comes to selling businesses or business owners that want to sell, sometimes they've asked me and they wanted to know who I am, what I do, who my partners are, what experience we've got, what kind of stuff that we've done. That's going to give them the confidence that we actually can take the business over and run it, but also we know what we're doing. It's not like we have just come out of a corporate job or we've, we've worked in Tesco's. By the way, no disrespect. There's nothing wrong with working in Tesco's. It's not like we're coming out of a employed position and then trying to buy a business. We need to show them and demonstrate them that we can, you know, we can buy the business and run the business. Same with an investor. You need to show them that you're you've got the skill, the competency, and the people around you on your team or your board can actually run the business. So, guys, there you have it. The 15 things you need to do, plus your own CV about what you need to do and what you need to demonstrate and what you need to show in terms of your skill set and your expertise to get investors to pitch with you. So, guys, I hope you found that really useful. Please like and subscribe. Put your comments and questions in the uh, comment section below. If you want to learn more about this stuff, go and join our Facebook group. There'll be a link underneath this video. Uh, if you want to learn about buying businesses and, and uh, how to um, uh, grow a portfolio of business, go and watch our M&A Masterclass. Again, there'll be a link around this video. At the end of that Masterclass, there'll be an opportunity to have a strategy call with either myself or one of my team. And what I'd like you guys to go, to, to go and do is go put this stuff into practice, go build businesses, Go and build your wealth and live your dream life. Let me know how you're getting on. So, guys, I'm going to wrap up this video. Take care. Bye for now. I'll see you in the next video.